Welcome back to Harbour Unboxed. So, recently I purchased the Ryzen 5 3600 for a review and I found it to be a cracking good deal. In short, it murdered the 9600K in core heavy productivity benchmarks and it was right there for the gaming tests as well, often offering better 1% low performance, all while costing notably less. Without a doubt, the most asked question coming away from that video was, should I buy the Ryzen 5 3600 or the 3600X? So to answer that question, I went out and I purchased a 3600X and we're gonna put it to the test. Now, at a guess, I'd say it's not worth it because we saw the same thing when comparing the 2600, the 2600X, even the 1600 and the 1600X, but we don't like to guess here at Harbour Unbox, so let's go run some benchmarks. Before that though, a quick rundown in regards to how these two CPUs compare on paper. Whereas the 3600 comes clocked at 3.6GHz for the base and 4.2GHz for the boost, the 3600X runs 200MHz faster at 3.8GHz and then 4.4GHz for the boost. So a 6% base clock increase and a 5% boost clock increase. The only other change in specifications can be seen when looking at the TDP. The 3600 is a 65 watt part and the 3600X is a 95 watt part. As such, the 3600 gets the 65 watt Wraith Stealth box cooler and the 3600X gets the 95 watt Wraith Spire box cooler. As for pricing, the base model 3600 comes in at $200 US, while the 3600X costs 25% more at $250 US. Quite a big markup there for the X model, so it'll be interesting to see what it has to offer. Both CPUs have been tested on the Gigabyte X570 Aorus Extreme with 16GB of G-Skills Flare X DDR4 3200CL14 memory, and the graphics card of choice for this CPU test is of course the GeForce RTX 2080 Ti, so let's get into the numbers. First up we have Cinebench's R20 multi-core test, and here we see a very mild 2% increase in performance for the 3600X over the vanilla 3600. Very underwhelming that, and it doesn't exactly justify the 25% price hike. Meanwhile, the single core performance sees an increase of just 3%, going from 481 points to 497 points. Then moving along to Premiere, and here we see the biggest performance gain yet as the 3600X reduced the render time by 5%, taking 513 seconds opposed to 539 seconds. Not exactly a big deal though, so let's just move on and see if we can find any bigger margins elsewhere. This time the 3600X reduced the render time by just 4% when testing with Blender, and at this point, you're probably starting to question why we need two of these six core 12 thread Zen 2 base CPUs. Anyway, moving on to games, and yeah, not much to say here either. The 3600 and 3600X basically delivered identical performance in Assassin's Creed Odyssey. The 3600X was up to 2% faster, which equates to a two FPS difference at most. And we see the same thing in Battlefield 5. The 3600X was again up to 2 FPS faster than the non-X model, so basically the same performance. Worse still, we only see a 1 FPS difference in the Division 2, and I should note that the 3600X and 3600 do match the 3700X in this title, and we also saw a similar thing when testing with Battlefield 5 and Assassin's Creed Odyssey. Having said all that, the 3700X does offer a small performance boost over the 3600X in Shadow of the Tomb Raider, but the 3600X was only up to 3% faster than the 3600. So it's pretty clear by this point that in terms of performance, the 3600 and 3600X are basically the same. Even when it comes to power draw, there's virtually no difference between the two. The 3600X increased total system consumption by just 4% when measuring total power draw from the wall. And that's interesting given that the thermal watt rating increased by 46% for the 3600X. Surely it's not chucking out that much more heat. I know that's not exactly what that rating means, but let's move on to see how they compare using the box coolers. So here we're looking at how the 3600X compares with its 95 watt Wraith Spire box cooler to the 3600 with its 65 watt Wraith Stealth box cooler. And we're doing so using the Blender Stress Test. Stock, we see the 3600 hit 80 degrees, and then we see the 3600X ran two degrees cooler at 78 degrees. But it achieved this while also running 100 megahertz higher, so a 2.5% increase in frequency. Then with PBO plus auto OC enabled in the Ryzen Master software, the 3600 hit 84 degrees, but only ran 25 megahertz faster, while the 3800X hit 84 degrees, but ran 50 megahertz faster for a 3% increase over the 3600. 
Then out of interest, I tested both CPUs with the Wraith Spire and Wraith Stealth Box coolers to see how the temperatures compared. In short, using either cooler, the 3600X ran six degrees hotter and you can expect some throttling with the Stealth cooler. So let's rerun these tests again with the Corsair H115i Pro installed. So with a quality all-in-one liquid cooler installed, we find something very interesting, and that is almost no difference between the two CPUs. Temperatures were exactly the same and clock speeds were also basically identical. In fact, the 3600 maintained a slightly better PBO frequency in our test, though I wouldn't read too much into that. There's a good chance if we ran this test enough times with enough CPUs, we'd find on average that there is no difference in operating frequencies between these two parts. And before wrapping this up, let's just have another look at power usage, this time focusing on CPU package power and core current. Using the included box cooler, we see virtually no difference in power draw between the 3600X and 3600. And the same is also true when using an aftermarket cooler. So is the Ryzen 5 3600X worth purchasing over the 3600? Well, obviously no. And other than to improve AMD's margins, there's absolutely no reason for the 3600X to exist. Sure, you do get a better box cooler, but you're paying $50 more for that cooler, and it's simply not worth that kind of price premium. $10, yeah, sure, but anything more than that, $20 or more, nah, not worth it. Rather than waste $50 on the 3600X, just get the 3600, and if you want to reduce the operating volume and squeeze a tiny bit more performance out of it, then grab something like the Cooler Master 212 Black for $40. I suspect the reason this content has been so heavily requested by you guys is again due to the misleading TDP rating. The only thing that makes the 3600 a 65 watt TDP part is the 65 watt cooler, while the 3600X is a 95 watt TDP part because it comes with a 95 watt cooler. You could basically swap the coolers around and then reverse the results. The 3600 becomes a 3600X with the Wraith Spire and the 3600X becomes a 3600 with the Wraith Stealth. AMD has explained how they calculate the TDP for the Zen 2 processors in the review guide, but it doesn't really help address this issue as there are variables that we still don't know, such as the optimal operating temperature for each part. And while I could ask AMD for those figures, in the end, it doesn't really matter as both CPUs are essentially the same as our testing shows. The only difference being the base and boost clocks, which on paper differ by up to 6%. Something I haven't talked about yet is manual overclocking. I know there'll be some viewers who claim the 3600X is a binned part and therefore will overclock better than the 3600. However, from my one sample test, that wasn't the case. Both were limited to 4.2 gigahertz at 1.35 volt. And while both could boot into Windows at 4.3 gigahertz using 1.4 volts, they failed even the most basic stress test. So there's not much more to say on this one. I highly recommend avoiding the 3600X and instead just grab the 3600. And then if you find it necessary to upgrade the box cooler, you can do so with something better. Anyway, that is going to do it for this one. If you enjoyed the video, feel free to hit the like button. You can subscribe for more content. And if you appreciate the work we do at Home Unboxed, then consider supporting us on Patreon for all the cool perks that you'll find over on our Patreon page. Links in the video description. Anyway, thank you for watching. I'm your host, Steve, and I'll see you again next time.